If I told you the United States built a wall in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you'd probably think I was joking, but it's real and it's massive. A six and a half mile long wall of stone stretching out into crashing waves off the Oregon coast. It doesn't separate countries or protect a border. It protects something even more important one of America's busiest arteries of trade. For more than a century, this wall known as the Columbia River Jetty System has quietly stood between order and chaos. It's what keeps ships from being swallowed by one of the most dangerous river mouths on Earth. Without it, billions in goods, fuel, and food wouldn't reach their destinations, and the coastline of the Pacific Northwest would look very different. It's not a monument, it's a lifeline, a man-made barrier built to fight one of nature's most violent battlefields, the point where the Columbia River meets the Pacific Ocean. But why here? Why did the US pour hundreds of millions of dollars into building a stone wall in the sea? And what's so deadly about this one stretch of water that sailors once called it the graveyard of the Pacific? Well, let's find out. Before you can understand why the U.S. built a wall in the Pacific, you need to understand what it's protecting. The Columbia River isn't just a river, it's a force of nature. Stretching more than 1,200 miles, it slices through mountains, forests, and farmland across seven U.S. states, and even a piece of Canada. Along the way, it drains an area bigger than the entire state of Texas. This river has powered entire cities, fueled industries, and even lit up the Pacific Northwest. It's 19 hydroelectric dams generate nearly half of the region's electricity, meaning without it, half the Pacific Northwest would probably be in the dark. Beyond its size, the Columbia River is an economic powerhouse. Today, it supports over $22 billion in annual trade, moving grain, timber, and manufactured goods between the Pacific Northwest and global markets. Nearly 40 million tons of cargo pass through its ports every year, making it one of the most vital arteries for U.S. commerce. But for all its power and product Activity, Columbia has a darker side. At the point where it finally meets the Pacific Ocean, everything changes. The calm river you see inland turns wild, fast. Its deep, steady flow suddenly slams into the ocean's chaotic tides. The result, massive, unpredictable waves and swirling sandbars that shift constantly beneath the surface. To sailors in the 19th century, this wasn't just a tough crossing. It was guaranteed destruction. This narrow stretch of water became known as the Columbia River bar. And let me tell you, it earned that terrifying nickname, the Graveyard of the Pacific. Over 2,000 shipwrecks and hundreds of lives lost, all in one spot. Even experienced captains would stop, wait, and pray before making the attempt. The U.S. government, though, couldn't ignore it forever. By the late 1800s, trade along the West Coast was booming. Timber, grain, and gold were all moving through this region. And every time a ship went down, it didn't just cost lives. It cost millions in goods and lost commerce. If America wanted to expand West, it needed to conquer this waterway. And that's when someone came up with a wild idea. What if you could tame the ocean itself? And well, it turns out you kinda can, and they did. Around the 1880s, when the US finally decided it was time to stop losing ships and start fighting back. And the plan they came up with was insane for the time. If the river mouth was too wild, they'd reshape it. Essentially, build a wall straight into the Pacific Ocean to redirect the river's flow, calm the waves, and carve out a safe passage for ships. In 1884, Congress gave the green light, and the US Army Corps of Engineers got to work. Their mission? Build what would become the Columbia River Jetty System, a network of stone barriers so large that even today it's hard to comprehend how they pulled it off with 19th century tools. Construction started on the South Jetty in 1885, right off the Oregon coast. It would eventually stretch to an unbelievable 4.5 miles into the ocean. That's roughly the length of 80 football fields and rise 30 feet above the waves. Remember, that was before modern cranes, before GPS, before any of the high-tech construction gear we rely on today. All they had were carts, rail tracks, and pure stubbornness. Thousands of workers spent a full decade placing massive boulders, each one weighing several tons by hand and primitive machinery. And somehow, it worked. When the jetty was finally completed in 1895, it completely changed the river's behavior. The flow deepened the channel, pushed sandbars back, and made the entrance far more predictable. 
Even more unbelievable, they finished the project 45% under budget, at just over $2 million, about $77 million in today's money. An unheard of achievement in government construction, even now. For the first time, ships could enter and leave safely. Trade boomed, ports expanded, and the Pacific Northwest began transforming into an industrial powerhouse. The project was such a success that engineers immediately began working on a second barrier, the North Jetty, in 1913 stretching out from the Washington side. Together, the two acted like massive arms, holding back the chaos of the Pacific. By the time Jetty A was added in 1939 to fine-tune the river's flow, more than 13 million tons of stone had been dropped into the ocean. The graveyard of the Pacific? Finally, it had some walls around it. But here's the thing about building a wall in the sea, or just trying to tame nature in general. Nature doesn't lose for long. The Pacific is patient. It doesn't fight back all at once. It just keeps pushing, wave after wave, year after year. By the mid-1900s, nature was already taking its revenge. Decades of storms and shifting tides started wearing away at the massive stone jetties. Waves slammed into them with the force of freight trains. Entire sections cracked, sank, and began to slide into the deep. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers did what engineers do best, hatch, reinforce, repeat. By the 21st century, those temporary fixes weren't cutting it anymore. The jetties were falling apart, and with them, the safety of one of America's busiest trade routes. Because here's what most people don't realize. If the jetties collapse, the river mouth collapses with them. Sand and sediment would pour into the channel, choking off access to ports all along the Columbia River. Portland, Vancouver, Longview, Astoria, all gone. Billions of dollars in annual trade, gone. The U.S. Coast Guard's busiest rescue zone, gone. So, in 2014, the Army Corps launched a full-scale rehabilitation project, a multi-phase mission that would take more than a decade and cost over $260 million. They didn't just want to repair the jetties, they wanted to rebuild them for another 50 years of war with the Pacific. It started small, with Jetty A in 2016, a quick $20 million reinforcement project focused on stabilizing one of the most erosion-prone sections near the river's mouth. Crews rebuilt stone layers that had slipped into the surf, reshaped the jetty crest, and sealed gaps where waves had begun carving through. It wasn't glamorous, but it was critical. That repair kept the entrance safe for hundreds of ships each year. Then came the North Jetty in 2018, a $39 million rebuild that wrapped up in just over a year. This phase targeted nearly two miles of failing stonework that had been battered by decades of storms. Engineers drove in new court rock, fortified the jetty's outer armor, and re-established its original height, restoring its ability to redirect tides and sediment. Without that fix, navigation channels could have narrowed by as much as 40%, threatening billions in maritime trade passing through the Columbia every year. But the real challenge was the South Jetty, a 6.5-mile monster that demanded over 360,000 tons of high-density granite and roughly $166 million in total construction costs. This final phase, the largest and most logistically complex, involved rebuilding massive sections from the seafloor up. Crews worked with GPS-guided excavators to position each multi-ton stone like a puzzle piece, forming a barrier strong enough to withstand 30-foot waves and protect this absolutely vital river system. But even then, the ocean fought back. Winter storms shut down operations, high tides flooded work zones, and every repair season felt like a race against time. By 2025, after nearly a decade of back and forth between man and sea, the South Jetty was finally approaching completion. Over 400,000 tons of stone now form the front line against the Pacific, an engineering monument to persistence, logistics, and maybe just a bit of madness. So, why spend nearly $300 million rebuilding a wall that most people will never see? Because this stretch of ocean, this narrow, constantly shifting mouth of the Columbia River, is, like I already said, one of the most important gateways in the United States. Every year, more than 50 million tons of cargo pass through this channel. That's everything from grain and lumber to cars and electronics, a lifeline for the Pacific Northwest and beyond. Without those jetties holding the river steady, the trade would grind to a halt. Ships would be stranded offshore. Ports would go silent. 
and the graveyard of the Pacific the name sailors once gave this place might start living up to its reputation again. But the jetties don't just protect commerce, they protect people. The U.S. Coast Guard station Cape Disappointment, which despite the name is anything but disappointing, it's one of the busiest rescue stations in the country. Its crews perform hundreds of missions every year, pulling vessels and sailors out of the water during brutal storms. Without the jetty system, even the Coast Guard's most advanced ships would struggle to cross the bar safely. And here's the part that hits harder the more you think about it. These stones aren't just stopping waves, they're stopping history from repeating itself. Every boulder, every ton of granite stacked into the sea is a quiet promise. That the mistakes, the shipwrecks, and the loss that once defined this place will never happen again. The Columbia River jetty system isn't flashy, it doesn't tower over a skyline, or sparkle under city lights. But, in its own way, it's one of America's most heroic megastructures. One that doesn't seek attention, only endurance. And as the final stones lock into place in 2025, the question becomes, how long can it last this time? Because no matter how much engineering you throw at the Pacific, the ocean always gets the last word. But in the end, the Columbia River jetties are more than just piles of rock. They're proof that, sometimes, the most extraordinary engineering isn't about reaching for the sky. It's about holding the line. For over a century, these walls have stood between order and chaos, between trade and tragedy, quietly protecting billions in commerce and countless lives from the Pacific's relentless pull. And now, as the 2025 restoration nears completion, the jetties enter their next chapter, built stronger, smarter, and ready to face another 50 years of waves, wind, and time itself. But here's the truth. Even the best engineering can't conquer nature forever. The ocean never quits, it just kinda waits. So, what do you think? Will the Columbia River jetty stand the test of another century? Let us know your thoughts down below. And if you love exploring the world's most ambitious and sometimes forgotten feats of engineering, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and stay tuned.